Okay, this is something that we haven't really talked about much over the past few months, but look, today the Chicago Blackhawks are giving us reason to talk about them. We've got two stories pretty much coinciding in the same timeline that overlap in the weirdest way possible. And I'm going to go out there and say it. This is weird. Really, really weird. Okay, maybe this first story, maybe not so weird, but the second story definitely is. Let's get into tale number one here. Taylor Hall, medical update from the Blackhawks earlier this morning. He's going to miss the remainder of the Blackhawks season after undergoing surgery on his right knee. So there you go, Taylor Hall, big RIP to the 23-24 season from Halsey right here. One of the biggest acquisitions the Chicago Blackhawks made, pretty much to help Connor Bedard settle into the NHL and give him the chops, you know? Say, hey, Bedard, you're a first overall pick with a whole bunch of expectations on you. Guess what? 13 years ago, I was a first overall pick with a ton of expectations on me, so there was an idea that said that Taylor Hall could come over to Chicago, help out Bedard, and do that stuff. Now, Taylor Hall, in this season's worth of play, was pretty... Meh, I don't want to say he was the best player in the world. Four points, 10 games played on pace for about 30 points in a 75 game campaign. But of course, we know now that his season is no longer going to continue. He's not going to get any more games played. So this season, I mean, if you wanted to take a look at Taylor Hall and his point production, let's do four divided by 10 multiplied out by 82. His total point production pace would have been around 32, 33 points ish on the year. If you wanted to take a look at all all of the other seasons Taylor Hall has had this year of 23-24 is probably... Yeah, it is. It's the worst season Taylor Hall has ever had on paper in regards to points per game and overall point production pace. I cannot wrap my head around that because Taylor Hall has just been such an interesting, weird, up and down profile ever since he was an Edmonton Oiler. Pretty good as a first overall pick. Maybe not Connor McDavid level, but he was still pretty good. He had 80 points one year with the Oil. And eventually, he got sent over to New Jersey. He had a 93-point season over there. Heart winner, Taylor Hall. That was a really big deal. And that was indeed, like, what... 2018, 2024, six years ago, he bounced around to Arizona, Buffalo, Boston, now Chicago. Taylor Hall has been a pretty okay player, even in Boston, 61 points in 81 games played. You definitely cannot argue with that. That's a pretty good NHL player. But now, he's going to be on the LTIR. He's got a... How many years is this contract? $6 million a year until the end of 2024, 2025. So he's got two more seasons left on the deal at 32 years old. Taylor Hall... Honestly, did an okay job at fulfilling the role he was brought in to do. Like, you definitely saw some of the camaraderie there between Hall and Connor Bedard. Bedard, by the way, just doing absolutely amazing for the Blackhawks if we go over to that real quick. Because, hey, you can't go out there and mention Taylor Hall without mentioning Bedard. 16 points, 17 games played, and 10 goals on top of that, too. Connor Bedard's on pace for a 48-goal season and 77 points. Screw the 100-point Sidney Crosby comparison. This is a pretty alright season comparative to... To that, mostly because the Chicago Blackhawks absolutely stink this year. And for Taylor Hall to have been given this role and to not really be able to fulfill it beyond 10 games, that is super unfortunate. Obviously, you don't want to see guys miss out on time. But for Taylor Hall, knee surgery seems to be the real deal here. And it's an unfortunate ending to his 23-24. Now, this was story number one. This was unfortunate, but it's not the weird thing that everybody is focusing on right now. What everybody is talking about instead is another Chicago Blackhawk. It's Corey Perry, who's got nine points in 16 games played right now. He's on pace for about 45 points, which would be one of the best seasons he has had since his Anaheim days, oddly enough. But Corey Perry, the point production, the role, he has been good. He has been solid this season, especially for the cap hit of $4 million. Oh my goodness, he's making $4 million a year. I did not expect that. He's been making such small amounts of money the past few years, $1 million, $700,000, etc., etc., that the $4 million, yeah, that caught me off guard. But either way, Corey Perry making a pretty decent amount of money is providing some pretty decent production. But all of that has come to an end because the other night, Corey Perry was actually healthy scratched. And if you take a look at what happened afterwards, 
This is the update from Ben Pope. Corey Perry, after being healthy scratch due to an organization decision last night, is not practicing with the Blackhawks today. Peter Morazic isn't either. It's not a very joyous Thanksgiving around these parts. This was from earlier this morning on the 23rd, and if you wanted to talk a little bit more about why Corey Perry is not practicing, here are some quotes that don't make things any better. It makes things worse. Here is what Nick Foligno said about Corey Perry. We just know that he's now here with us. We haven't gotten any details. It's unfortunate. He's a big part of this. We'll miss him. Felino was also asked on how the Hawks will prevent Perry's absence becoming a distraction. We've got a lot of young guys, so it's kind of a shock at first, but it's being a pro. We talk about it, and this is an opportunity to do that. It's outside the noise that you have to push away. So not only did the Chicago Blackhawks lose out on Taylor Hall, but they've also got Corey Perry not playing and not being a part of practice, and the worst part is the Blackhawks and their team, they don't even know why the case is that he is missing out. Here are some more tweets. Luke Richardson says that the Blackhawks will not provide any details about Corey Perry's situation. Transparency was a big word around the Blackhawks organization with the new regime. I'm sure they have their reasons for being so tight-lipped about the Perry situation, but all this does is fuel wild, baseless speculation. Very curious situation here. Here's another tweet. Mark Lazarus says he tried to get Richardson to at least clarify if Perry's situation was asset management for a trade or something disciplinary, noting all the wild speculation that's already out there. Richardson says, I'm sure there is speculation, but unfortunately, I can't give you anything but that today. And that is so strange. If you have a guy who is a healthy scratch because it's an organizational decision, and the next day he's not attending practice, the captain of the team is saying, yeah, we just don't know. Like, he's not here. We're going to miss him, whatever, whatever. Like, they make it sound like he died. What's going on here? Now, for all the other people in the Blackhawks organization to not give any updates of any kind, not even allude to what's going on here, saying, yeah, there's a lot of speculation, but I can't tell you anything. Sorry. Like, what is going on with this situation? It's like they're trying to hide something. Here's another tweet from Charlie Rumliotis. Nick Foligno talked about, yeah, he said we haven't gotten any details. Connor Bedard said he didn't know much either. I'm not going to speak out on it too much. Obviously, it sucks he's not here. He's a big part of our team. And there are some funny replies to this tweet. Oh, what do you mean he's not here? Like, he's not with us anymore? Like, yeah, the language being tossed around here with this Corey Perry situation is so bizarre that I don't even really know how to react. And a lot of people on social media don't know how to react either. Here is the Reddit post on our hockey of the same tweets that we were just looking at. Mark Lazarus, Luke Richardson, Blackhawks not providing any details about Corey Perry's situation. Spellbound Unicorn says it's honestly irresponsible to be so vague and let speculation run rampant like this, especially when the team has the history of covering things up like the Blackhawks have. If it's not something nefarious, then all you need to do is say it's a personal matter. And this is something that I agree with. If it's something that's not that big of a deal, like, okay, Corey Perry didn't commit a crime. Corey Perry's not getting arrested. Corey Perry's not doing illegal stuff. If it's just a family matter, he's not here because he's, I don't know, death in the family or something, just say personal matter. Just say something that we can put a label to so that the media is calmed down. Not to let stuff get rampant and even have it acknowledged by people on the team. Oh yeah, there's a lot of speculation going around, but we can't give you anything. We can't calm the speculation down. Oh, sorry. We just got to let you go with that. Here's another comment that I thought was interesting. What's the general situation? Is Corey Perry hurt? Did he do something bad? I'm out of the loop. Based on their comments, even his teammates are out of the loop, so you haven't missed anything. Basically, he was a late scratch before last night's game, and even then, he wasn't at practice today. No one knows what's up. Nobody knows, hence the tight-lipped nature of the club. Likely a family matter. Here's the reply that I think makes sense. If that's the case, I don't understand why you wouldn't just say family matter, and from there refuse to provide any further details out of respect for their privacy. This vague organizational decision makes me believe it's something a bit more sordid. Or it's a trade. Who knows? Like, if it is a trade, just go out there and make the trade already. Come on, why are you, like, holding back on this? so weird. Let me know your thoughts in the comment section below, firstly, about Taylor Hall getting sidelined for the rest of the season, and secondly, for Corey Perry being an organizational business decision scratch, and have him not show up for practice the next day. How weird is this? Do you think I'm overreacting when I'm making this video and talking about it like this? Let me know your thoughts in the comment section below. I hope you enjoyed this Vrishash Rolls 99.
and bye.